Hmm. Yep. Yeah, big catch. Okay. We're gonna make a cray pot today. A homemade cray pot out of a couple of milk crates. We're gonna use a uh, flower pot. It's a 200 mil by 190 mil flower pot for the entry. That'll go there. And then what we're gonna do is for the bait cage, we're gonna use one of these burly, burly pots which has an unscrewable lid and that'll sit in underneath and bolt up underneath and then you'll be able to reach in and undo it to stuff it full of bait. We've got some weights to go inside as well and the ropes and we'll uh, show you the build process. All right, so all I want to do is mark off where the tub's going to go. Because it's such thin plastic, kind of want to make sure we're cutting it where it's going to structurally retain as much rigidity as possible and so that we can tie it on. We want to keep that corner. Perfect. So that's basically going to be the main body of the pot. We'll cut this pot down, or the entry rather, on the bottom. What I want to try and do is make sure that we've got enough room to be able to get this slightly overkill, but this is going to be screwed, screwed up underneath. We want to try and make sure that we've got enough room under that pot to be able to get that out, which we do. So basically what we're going to do is unscrew it through the pot neck, bring it out through the top of the pot so we can put the bait in and then go back underneath and screw it on again. So this lid will be bolted up under there and that'll, uh, that'll form the mounting spot for the bait tray. We just screw that on and it'll stay up underneath there. That's the plan. So for the time being we need to cut this. So there's a line on the bottom here just above those little notches. We'll cut that off now. Perfect. So you should be able to reach in and screw that on. And now to drill the holes to mount this, mount this on there. So what I think we'll do is we'll draw some holes and wire that on. Use this galv mousing wire to uh, wire the pot neck in. Pretty thin and pliable, so it should be easy enough to work with. All right, that's our pot neck in. Now what we need to do is join these two together. And uh, put the weights on the inside.
All right, so here's the weights we're going to use. We're going to put single weight at the back end of the pot and two, if we can fit them. Maybe we'll put them off to the side. Something different. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. And then that other steel plate at the back end of the pot so that when these are together, like this, we got double the weight on this end where the rope's gonna be, and then a single weight on the back end to stop that bouncing around. Okay. Okay, those weights are in. I'll strap this one in. Beautiful. You want the weights to be in reasonably tight because if they move around, cause noise or bang and clang, then less likely that the craze will go in. So there's the basic pot done in terms of the shape. It's got a bit skewed anyway, that's all right. Now what we're gonna do is mount the burly cage. Probably go that way. Cable tie this in. We'll pop a couple of screws in. Obviously, where possible, I'm trying to use galve screws because they don't rust. We can see how that's all screwed in there. Really, really solid. Then this goes on the bottom, screws on. Just like that. In terms of getting it out, reach in. Twist it off. And pull it out the bottom, fill it up, poke it back in. That's it. Very good. Now we're going to screw this together. <laughs> I'm just do that all the way around. Every corner's got a screw, and we'll go the opposite way. Well, that's really, that's really solid, that ain't moving. It's a good amount of weight in there without it being too heavy. Now, we just need to make the escape hatches. So the escape hatches have to be 
So it's on here, 54 millimeters. Which is basically the inside of these lines here. So, so we'll cut that row out and that'll make the right size escape gap at the bottom. And then I've got some something to use for the sides. Okay, that gives us our escape hatch. It needs to be 305 mil, which basically means we've got to cut this little lip here out as well. So we'll do that now. Okay, escape hatch one. And for the sides, we're getting all sophisticated like. Grab these from BCF for like four or five bucks or something each. So we're going to modify them so that they work on the sides here. <laughs> I'll turn it over to the side first. <laughs> All right, so Okay, my okay. Huh? Oh. The hell's wrong with you people? Yeah. Okay, so because we've had to cut that piece out there, we had to chop it right the way out to the edge to make way for the, um, to allow for this to fit in. And because of that, we've had to reinforce the edge here with a couple more extra screws, which we've done now. So next thing is to get this installed on the side. So we screw them in on that side. So there's the escape hatch on the side. The reason I cut the edge of that off is just so that it doesn't grip on anything and snap the plastic. It's all screwed in, cable tied in, it's in there nice and tight. Can't come out. So we'll do the same to the other side. Alright, well, that's it. That's basically done. So now all I need to do is just make sure that any of the other openings or holes in the pot aren't larger than the escape hatch sides, obviously, so that the crayfish can't get out. Like that's unlikely. These are all smaller. But on the sides, there's these larger holes. So I will blank them off with some wire. And that should be it. Weighted on both sides. Entry hole. Bait hatch. Cool. So what I'm doing here to try and eliminate the problem with the oversized holes, I've just drilled some holes on these braces and I'm passing a piece of wire, a single strand piece of wire through. And I'll go all the way through and then just sort of twitch that up so that it gives us a bit of extra blockage in those holes. 
that's it so we're going to go around the pot and do that now just so that we've got those holes sort of filled in a bit and that'll at least make sure that the craze can't get out through these larger holes I mean if they're getting out through these holes then you probably don't want the craze anyway because these holes are smaller than the escape hatch when you do these wires up you kind of want to keep them as tight as possible too you, you don't want them to be able to vibrate in the water and cause a bit of a rattle otherwise again craze are less likely to go in the pot so you want to try and keep it as much tension on the wire as you can as you're doing this so that you don't end up with loose loose strands just wobbling and vibrating and you can hear they're pretty stable they don't move that's pretty pretty taut I'm always trying to keep the ends of these wires bent down towards a flat surface as well so if you're going to grab this pot you don't accidentally grab it somewhere where there's a sharp wire and spike yourself when you're out in the water it's the little things that matter okay that's the end result with the cray pot it's um finished the only thing it needs now is the the rope and the bridle so we've got the escape hatches three of them on the opposite end to the towing end or retrieval end we've got our bait basket on the inside fill that up with the bait back up underneath lock it on you can cable tie it if you really wanted to the only issue is getting craze out of here is going to be a bit of a challenge for that neck so we'll see how we go that neck is the is 170 mil the maximum or sorry minimum legal size is 160 so we're right on the legal size i've kept the entry in the pot sort of level so that they can't sort of reach in and pick bait out not that i think they'll be able to get much bait out of those slits anyway so the idea is um now to put the rope and the bridle on the on the end so we'll grab a rope and we'll work out how we're going to tie that on i expect i'll probably go through this side here so that at least when it's on the ground it doesn't uh chafe the rope so we'll probably tie it on the edges of that also it's pretty meaty and strong there all right we're going to drill a hole here for the rope to go through so we pass the rope through the hole and we're going to do the world's most safest knot <laughs> a granny knot just to stop it from being able to pull back through do the same thing on the other side bit of a mission to get through there that's it it's a good weight be nice and easy to pull probably come up a bit squarer than that but not really not mission critical anyway so that's that's the cray pot so these will be a great little compact option to take to a beach somewhere you've got a beach launch a cray pot throw it off into the reef pull it up nice and easy without the need for a boat that's your huckleberry you to use being plastic too i know they don't catch as well but being plastic you don't have to worry about soaking it so these are perfect for those little overnight missions the quick ones that you want to just throw a cray pot off the rock wall and uh hope for a cray or two all right guys so that's the end of the backyard budget build there's our cray pot made out of two milk crates with our rope we've only got 12 to 15 meters of rope on it initially we'll put it in some shallow water reef and hopefully we'll catch a cray or two once we get out there and we go to drop it in i'll bring you along for the journey crayfish view well guys well that's our uh budget cray pot build for the day or for the weekend it's been pretty crappy weather so sometimes you've got to take the opportunities to do these things i haven't been able to take the boat out because that's my tow package no tow ball the car's still in being repaired so unfortunately i can't use the boat but 
it gives me an excuse to knock off some of these projects. So if you guys like this sort of stuff, then um, let me know. Like and subscribe, it helps me out. And um, I'll show you when I put these pots in the water. Cheers.